So today is the final of the Faraday Challenge Days. There's been events running all over the country and the three top teams have come here today. Their challenge is to build a transport system that has to move three metres and it has to carry a rocket that they've made also to a launch site and then their rocket has to launch three metres into the air. It's going quite well, we've got our design and it, hopefully it should work but we can't wait to start building. Well we have to put two payloads on the rocket and we have to make sure they're not going to get damaged in the journey. I'm very impressed by the way that the young people that I'm talking to today are able to work together, the creativity that they're showing, their ability to, um, to come together and create really creative ideas and creative approaches to problem solving. So far the rocket's going really well but the transport system we need to work on because the circuits are really difficult to use. Okay, so you are the team haggler at the shop. I'm the accountant, yeah. yes. Right, so what's your budget? My budget is 180 Faraday's, so I'm keeping 20 behind for emergencies. The Faraday Challenge itself is extremely important because what it does is it takes some of the learning that the kids have done in the classroom, whether it be in science, maths, design or technology or computer science, and actually brings it together into a situation where they have to come up with practical applications of that learning and solve problems. Now, so much of engineering is about problem solving and coming up with solutions to issues that otherwise they might not have thought about, but also about team working, presentation skills, project management, time management, all these different things which are vital to an engineering project. The kids very often don't get that sort of thing in their normal classroom learning, but if we wanted them to become the engineers of the future, these are the sort of skills they need to start developing from a very early age. Did you do a flight test, the first rocket test? Yeah. And how did it go? Badly. Oh no, why is that then? We hadn't finished and it had loads of air gaps in, so oh. maybe I should fix it. Trying to fix our nose cone because it wasn't working at first and then we accidentally broke it. Well it went alright apart from the fact that it isn't very airtight so all the air is escaping. So what we've done now is we've just capped the top so no air can get out. <laughs> For me, the, the big thing about a Far the Faraday Challenge is that it's an opportunity for students to work completely independently, to take ownership of something and to not be restricted like we often are in schools by bells or hour-long lessons or whatever, and to actually have time to reflect and review on what they've done. I like hands-on activities. It's just quite fun throughout the day just to be here, have the experience. It's like once in a lifetime opportunity. My favourite part was making the rocket. Even though it didn't work that well, I still enjoyed it. By far, my favourite bit was, was the presentation at the end. I think I really enjoyed just spending time with, I don't know, me and my friends. And kind of just, actually, you know, when it's all kind of over, it, you can see the fun in it, how much fun we did have during the time we are here.